<sighs> Whoa. What's up, sons? It's Blind on with Sound Attack once again, and today I just am gonna be bending some tube. We're gonna do the first bend. This one's super simple. All you need to do is grab one of the predefined 90 degree bends here. Uh, that's all we have to do is 190. You'll get the tube. This particular one is 16 millimeters, so you wanna get the tool that fits the 16 millimeters. And then you'll need the little snake. That's what I call it. And this goes on the inside of the tube. I usually buy new ones here and there because they get sticky and they pick some dust up and they're not that expensive to just order new ones for new builds. So you got that and you'll just place it in the tube like so. And then the last piece you need is going to be a heat gun and a cutter. Sorry, I should mention the cutter. So here's, oh, here's our cutter. Uh, I prefer this one over a lot of them because you can just cut. And we do have a chamfer, a chamfer tool as well here. And that's just to clean up the edges so there's no sharpness that would cut or possibly cut an O-ring or anything like that. As far as heat guns go, I definitely recommend getting one that has adjustable temperature like this one. It has a dial on the back. You can either turn it right to turn it up, left to turn it down. I usually just set it right up and down like that. You also need some gloves. Here are the Wonder Gloves that I use. I got these from Mod My Mods, and that's just to protect your hands from the heat. So I like to have a lot of extra tubing because I'm still pretty new. We've only done like five or six builds, maybe a little bit more. And then you kind of want to you want to turn your heat gun on and you want to heat up a good section of it. While spinning it so that you don't heat one side too much. You don't want the gun to be too hot otherwise it's going to make the tube look bad. On the outside you can get kinks and such. And the 16 millimeter is going to be pretty, pretty difficult, the most difficult compared to any other PETG. I definitely recommend PETG for first time building though. You see we're starting to bend there. So we're almost warm enough to start getting the 90 in. And usually, I'll just lay it on the table and bend it around the piece that I want to match it to. Just like that. I didn't go too fast, maybe went a little fast there. Now my tool's a little messed up, I just realized, because this is a uh, I don't even know if I left this near the heat gun last time I was bending, but it's not going to work for me. So we're actually kind of just freehanding the 90 down here and holding it until it uh, cools off and then it'll harden up at that point. Our bend's not too bad. It's a little bad up here on the corner. Uh, so maybe we'll redo this 90, but it's pretty simple to do. You can get really used to it pretty quickly. Just pull the tube out and then you're just basically ready to start cutting. So at this point what I'll do is get as close to possible as I can with the cutters. And start testing. So obviously we need to cut a little bit more off. Just a tad more and it'll be ready. Mm 
and that's about good. So now I'm just gonna cut the other side. It's gonna be right around here. I always cut off less than you think you need to and go from there. And there we go. Our bend is done. So I am gonna redo that bend, uh, but I wanna show you guys how to do it. You can see here that I bent too fast, so it didn't really get a nice smooth curve. It got a little warped. But for where we're at right now, that's good. We have plenty of extra tubing. I just wanted to get a good basis one in. I'm gonna order another 90 before I bend the next one because you can get, while these tools aren't a end all be all for bends like this, it just makes it really easy to get a nice clean bend. So I'm gonna order one of these before I do my next bend and I'll get that bend done. So that's gonna wrap up pretty much how to bend hard tubing. If a guy like me can do it, I'm sure you guys can do it as well. Uh, by the way, the way these, uh, compression fittings work are a little bit different. And so you actually have to unscrew that and then put another O-ring in there, but we're just test fitting right now. But I am super happy with how that's gonna look. Uh, we'll only have two more bends. We're gonna have a 90 going into the GPU from here. And then the only other bend is going to be another 90 that comes into here and then goes into the basement. So that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. If you have any questions about tools or anything like that, let me know. Once again, uh, something like this to cut it is gonna make it a lot easier. When you're done, you'll use a chamfer tool like this to go ahead and clean up the insides and outsides so you don't cut any O-rings while you're installing it with sharp edges. Of course, cleaning up the sharp edges is always good. The only reason I don't like these is uh, you can get particles of the uh, tubing inside your loop. So be very careful with that. Get an air compressor, something along those lines, so that when you're done, you can just blow it off real quick and then you're golden. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, you'll just need uh, some of the snake, which I'll link down below, and the tubing itself. So pretty simple. I'll uh, link mod my mod down below. You can get all this stuff there, including the safety gloves. And when cutting the tubing, you should wear safety goggles. So. See you next Tuesday.